morning. How many of you believe that song? Amen. That God is great. So real that you can feel it in your soul. Now the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It didn't leave out anything. Everything. And Christians, more than any of those things, should understand that and apply that. So let everything that has breath praise the Lord this morning. Why don't you give him some praise this morning? Because one of the saints went on to say, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Not a happy noise, but a joyful noise. And there's a little bit of a difference. You know, you're going to have some trials, and you're going to have some tribulations in your life. And that's all right. You're not alone. And that's the thing to keep in mind. That when you're going through, you're not alone. Because at some point, I don't know if it's morning. I don't know if it's midday. I don't know if it's evening. And for some of us, it may be late in the midnight hour. All I know that joy will come in the morning. And he will wipe away your tears. So today, as you come to praise the Lord, think about all that he's done for you. Think about how he will never leave you or forsake you. How he's blessed you once. How he's blessed you twice. Yes, yes. How he's blessed you over and over and over again. Amen. He is real, people. Yes. And he will never, ever let you down. Amen. I can tell you that I'm a living witness this morning. I can feel it in my soul. Amen. Amen. There have been times that I want to give up. But thank God for Jesus. Amen. Because there is something about the name of Jesus. Yeah. And he has all power in his hand. Amen. And because he has all power in his hand, somebody that you can trust. Somebody that you can lean and depend on. And I don't know how you can sit there on your hands. I don't know how you can sit there with your feet still. I don't know how you can sit there with your mouth closed. Because he is worthy to be praised this morning. Somebody say amen this morning.
and follow what is in your hands. It's a different hand. Because they try to shut you down with evil nails in your hands, Father, but they couldn't do it. We thank you, Father, for even the trials and the tribulations. Bless this morning, Father. Bless in a mighty way. Touch this morning, Father. Touch hearts that are troubled, that are sad. Touch this morning, Father. Let them know that there is a reality in serving a God that will always be there. Bless those, Father, that are on the way this morning, Father. Bless those that, Father, wanted to come but couldn't make it. Be there with them as well, Father. Continue to bless, Father. Continue to be there, Father, for we need you like we've never needed you before, Father. We need a hope, Father, as we continue to pray for all the trials, Father, for the wars, Father, for the rules of war. Amen. Touch, Father, be there. For man has proven over and over that he can't solve wars, he can only start. Help this morning, Father. Touch this morning, Father. Help us to understand that we can do nothing. That we can only lean and depend on your power. And thank God for your power this morning, Father. A power that's able to heal. A power that's able to not fail, Father. Thank you this morning, Father. Bless our choir this morning, Father. And touch them, Father, and help them, Father, as they get ready to sing Zion's song this morning, Father. Continue to bless this congregation and this church as we try to do your work and be more <coughs> like Christ. And then, Father, don't forget to shepherd this morning, Father. Touch him. Help him this morning. Give him strength and give him courage, Father. Touch him, Father, from the top of his head, Father, all the way down to his feet. Fill him with the Holy Spirit. Guide him, Father. And then, Father, bless America. Not only America, Father, bless the world. Be there. Help us, Father. Don't leave us now, Father, for we need you. These blessings, Father, we do ask. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we do pray, amen. 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 So, Revelation 19, 1 and 2 says, After this I heard what seemed to be the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven, crying out, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belongs to our God, for his judgments are true and just. For he has judged the great multitude prostitute who corrupted the earth with their mortality, and has avenged on the blood of his servants. So as this verse says, the rejoicing in heaven, I want us to rejoice in this
like um, we are ready this morning, so we're going to look at what the pastor says with some attitude this morning. All right, so are we ready? Yeah. All right. We are? All right.
online version, so it may be slightly different than what you have in hand. But it is the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And it reads, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, was one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. Turn the mic down just a little bit. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger where the nails were, put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Let me read that again. Unless I see the nail marks in his hand, put my finger where the nails were, put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again. Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. All right. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, for the time that is ours to share together this morning, I want to preach with this thought in mind. My wounds are my witness. My wounds are my witness. Isaiah declares he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Prophet Isaiah, hundreds of years before Christ graced us with his presence, painted the portrait of a suffering servant whose wounds were not a sign of defeat, but a divine declaration of victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Because the Bible testifies that on the third day morning, God raised Jesus from the dead. And when he did so, put all power in his hand. I wish I had some help. And following the resurrection, Bible says that Jesus hung around for 40 days, made appearances to his disciples and to those who knew and loved him. And, and so here it is that, that on this resurrection day, he appears to the women who were at the tomb. That afternoon into the evening, he walked among the Emmaus Road and met up with them in the maze. Yeah. The Bible says that when their eyes were opened and they realized that Jesus was with them, that, 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 that they got up and ran back some seven miles to Jerusalem just to let the other disciples know that they had seen the risen Savior. All right. 
Bible says that the disciples were together and huddled up in the house and they were there with the doors shut. It's night time, my brothers and my sisters. So the house is dark and the only light that they have is the light from the candles burning with oil. And so as they're surrounded by one another and as they're in the dark room, I can imagine that their emotions are high. Yeah. The Bible says that they had to endure everything that happened the past week. They had to witness the death of their friend. They themselves, fearful for their own lives, have been hiding so that no one will see them. Amen. Here it is that in the process of them trying to do what they are called to do as disciples, they're fearful for their lives. And not today. <laughs> Not the 
permissible. For they say we have seen Jesus and that our Lord has returned. But on the other hand, he feels anger. He feels bitterness. He feels doubt. Why would Jesus show up and make an appearance to everybody else knowing that I wasn't going to be there? Why, why, why would the Lord come when only some of us are there and not all of us? I, I can imagine that for this week that, that, that Thomas has remained close with the other disciples because he was experiencing some FOMO, fear of missing out. And he said, just in case Jesus shows back up, I, I don't want to miss his appearance. So for a whole week, he's had to hear the other disciples talking about their encounter with Jesus. For, for this week, he's had to, to endure listening to them and, and their stories of happiness as they've been reunited with their friend while he has not experienced it. How often... Is it the case that we hear instances of the Lord showing up in other folks' situations? When we're waiting for God to show up in our situation. And we have to hear what the Lord has done for them. But yet God seems absent in our own lives. How many times have we been like Thomas in that we've been waiting for the Lord to show up but we have to listen to the testimony of somebody else saying the Lord stopped by and saw about me and saw about my needs. Thomas has had to endure this. But here it is a week later. They're in the room. The room is still dark. The candles are still lit. The air is filled with the aroma of the oil being burnt to light the candles. And as they're there and as they're gathering and as they're praying with the doors locked, the Bible says that Jesus shows up. My, my brothers and my sisters, I, 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 I cannot help but to think about Thomas but think about my own situation because all of us at some point in time are faced with situations where the fabric of our faith is tested. It's easy to point a finger at Thomas and, and say, oh, ye of little faith. But if we're honest, all of us have had some situations in life where our faith has been tested. All of us have been put in some situations where we've been proved that our faith wasn't as strong as we thought it was. Amen. Amen. So here it is. Thomas is in the room with the others. Jesus shows up. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting to me. The Bible says that the doors were locked. But Jesus still showed up. The, the, the doors were locked, but the Lord still got in. The, the doors were locked, but Jesus still had access. My, my brothers and sisters, can I, can I submit to you this morning that there's some stuff in our lives that we might be able to shut out and lock out. But I don't care how big your lock is, you can't keep God out of your situation. They're fearful for their lives. Because they're fearful for their lives and they saw what they did to Jesus, they're hiding behind closed doors. Because they said if they did it to Jesus, then show up, they can do it to us. And so they are cowering in the dark under the light of candle. But here it is, even 
behind locked doors, Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up. In the midst of Jesus showing up, his gaze meets the gaze of Thomas. When he says to Thomas, Here I am. Here are my wounds. See, touch, and believe. Tells. And 
and my God. There, 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 there's not biblical evidence that says that Thomas even touched. But the fact that Jesus showed up and extended the invitation to do so was enough for Thomas to be able to come to the realization that God in the flesh was in front of him. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Because you have seen me, you have believed. But less are those who have not seen me, but still have to be. Yeah, amen. Amen. My, my brothers and my sisters, that's the category that we fall into in that we were not there. We did not see for ourselves. We did not touch his wounds. We were not there, but somewhere along the way we heard about a man named Jesus. <laughs> And faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I've got to take a note out of the playbook of Jesus in that I'm not afraid to expose my wounds, my scars, my hurts to people. But I also have to learn from Thomas in this, in that I'm willing to believe and to have faith, even though I didn't see or touch it for myself. Amen. I trust in God wherever I may be, on the land or on the road and see, for come what may, from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over me. We've got to have faith, even when we can't see. We've got to have faith, even when we weren't there. We've got to have faith, just enough to believe that God is in our midst. And if God showed up over here for somebody else, show up, God, and show up in my situation. My wounds are my witness. Some people believe that my wounds are my weakness. No, no, no. All of us have wounds. Amen. All of us have hurts. All of us have Amen. brokenness. Yes. But our ability to be vulnerable in that and to expose that and to show others is what makes our witness believable. And further points to the fact that had it not been for the Lord who was on our Somebody tell me where would I be? Jesus. Let us stay.
have heard all that our hearts have felt. We pray, God, that as we depart from this place, that you go with us and before us, keep us safe from hurt, harm, and danger. And God, we'll be careful to give you all praise, all honor, and all glory, knowing that thou grace is sufficient. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit rest upon and abide now, henceforth and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Amen.